Hello guys, welcome to this video. I'll still be looking at the ICT paper 2-2 May June 2023. So for this particular video, I'm going to concentrate on the presentation aspect, which is the um, the PowerPoint aspect of this uh, paper. Okay, so let's begin. That's for presentation. You are going to create a short presentation. All slides must have a consistent layout and formatting. Okay, 22. Create a presentation of six slides using the file j2322vcworld.rtf. Unless otherwise instructed, the slides must display a, a title and a bulleted list. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let me just open this. Uh, let me just uh, go to open. I want to browse for my file. Um, let me look for it in the desktop. See here, and then in my, I think it's supposed to be here. So let me just click on here, all files. So I'm interested in opening. Uh, let me just be sure again. So sorry. <laughs> okay, VC World. Okay, VC World. Okay, that's it here. So I can open that here. So as you can see, it's supposed to be six slides, and then we have six slides here, and each slide must have a heading and a bullet list. Uh, let's be sure of what they said here. Slide must display a title, sorry, a title and a bulleted list. So if you check all the slides, they all have titles and bulleted lists. So we are in order. Okay. All right. So that's that's it for this particular one. So I'll just uh, highlight it. And then 23, place in the header automated slide numbers left aligned. Place in the footer your name, center number, and candidate number left aligned okay okay so make sure that the header and footer appear in the same position on every slide no items overlap okay good stuff okay so our job is to make sure that we have automated slide numbers left aligned uh, um, at the header in the header right okay so let's go back so you want to go to view you want to go to slide master because that's how that's where you can have the you have made these changes okay so that it will appear on every slide okay so you want to make sure this is very very important you cannot miss this you must click on the first every change you want to make must be on the first slide here in the slide master okay you must make it on the first slide because this uh, this slide, whatever change you make on this first slide, will cascade to other layouts. So as you can see, these are many layouts that you can have in PowerPoint. So if you whatever change you make on this first one, will cascade to the other types of uh, layouts. Okay. So if you choose to do it on this, maybe this one. So that means the changes will be on that particular type of layout so what if in your slide you never use that layout so that means nothing it's not going to be a, a you know um other layouts will not be affected so very very important make sure you click on the first one okay good stuff all right so let's continue so um we are meant to have our uh, automated number here up here to the left right so if you look at this place you see that this place holders here this one here uh, takes care of a uh, date this one takes care of the footer and then this one takes care of the number so what i'm going to do i'm going to just carry this one up here and then reshape it a little further let me just reshape it this side so that will be that will uh, take a place of my number okay so let me just bring it down here okay so uh, what i can do is to just make it to be let's say um, let me go home and then make it something like uh, black. Let me just make it complete black because, of course, it will be gray a little bit when you, uh, you know, preview it in the normal slide. Okay. So here, so this footer. So now, if you don't activate this num number, it's not going to appear on your slide. Okay. So to do that, you want to go to insert. You want to go to. Um, Okay, so let me let me actually effect my change here. So first of all, I'm going to carry this uh, placeholder to this to this right. So I'm going to just ignore it. It's not always good to you know just delete placeholders just like that. So I'm going to just have my name here in the footer. Ketchup comma sorry ketchup and I'll for comma ng 
156, comma, and then I have 0004 as my candidate number. So I want to make sure that it's on the left, right, from the question. Now, if you go back, this thing is not going to be activated. It's not going to be on your... So you can just... Okay, let me just inject that right now. So I'm going to go back to slide view, close that, and then you see that nothing. The number is not showing. The footer is not showing. So you need to activate it, okay? So let me go back right there. And then, and then go to slide master, back to slide master. Ensure that you are on the first one, on the first slide, please. So I will make sure I select the first slide. Okay, so you want to go to um, insert here. You want to go to header and footer. So from here, when you check this slide number, that is when your slide number will show in your main slide. Okay, so I will check uh, this one, the footer. So my footer will check. So assuming that they say we should ha have our date and time or something, I can click on, I can check this one here. Okay, so for now, we are told to have slide number and footer. So I'm going to apply to all. Okay. So by the time I exit uh, this, you will see that every slide will have a number that as well have my information down here. Okay. So um, one more thing, I didn't I didn't make that one black, very black, even though the question never said that. But I like it to you know just be black, black, just to be visible when printed. Okay. So I'm going to go to home and then just make it black. Okay. So it will show better. Okay. So I'll close that again. So, yeah. So, I think that's about it for this one. I think everything is showing. So, we never allowed any overlapping of, uh, you know, placeholders and all that. So, we are good with this. So, I will just uh, select that. Okay. So, number 24. Use the data in the file j 2322 apps.csv to create a vertical bar chart. To show the number of uh, downloads for each app, these charts uh, must display only the app title and uh, downloads. Okay, in millions, in million. Display the display with labels the app titles on the category. So the category should be the horizontal axis, I guess. Yes, horizontal axis. Okay, do not uh, display a legend. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go uh, open that. So we're going to use uh, this file here. So app.csv. So I want to go to my source file here. Go back and then find app.csv. So I'm going to open that. Inspect the file. So let me just double click here. Let me just inspect the file to be sure of what I'm seeing. Okay, so our job is to create uh, a chart, a vertical bar chart. To show the uh, the number of uh, downloads for each app, so this chart must display the app title and then download. So we're interested in just app title here. So I'm going, I'm just going to uh, select that and then hold on my control key and then select this. Okay. So there are two ways we can do this. So you can either go to insert and then click on uh, recommended uh, charts here. So you see that the recommended chart will show you some charts that you can do automatically. So you find out that the best will be this one. So you can OK that and then that will be created for you. So of course, the traditional way that we normally do is just to go to insert and then go to a column chart here, which is a bar chart, and then click on the first one. And then so whichever one you click, that should give you something suggestive. But of, of course, you might still have to do some adjustment. OK, so. So we have something like this. So let's see. So you find out that the, the app title, let's see what the question says. So display with labels, the app titles on the category. So you see that the, the category here shows the app uh, title. So we are good with that. Okay. So um, what's the next thing? Okay. So I think we've created that, uh, this chart. We've done this. Uh, do not display a legend. Not legend is displayed right there. So we're good with this one. Okay. So number 25, label the chart as follows. Chart title uh, will be fitness, sorry, top fitness app download, download 2022. So I'm going to copy that. Sorry. Uh, go here. So the title has to be this. Okay. So select and, um, you know, I like to make it black. I don't know why I always want to make this thing stand out. 
so but i'm gonna i'm just gonna make it stand out okay um so let's see the next thing to do so value axis title million so the title will be million here so this is the value axis here okay zero to twelve and then we'll have our uh, category axis which are the uh, velotopia and the rest of them okay so uh, our job is to you know label the value axis so you want to click on that on the on your chart you want to go to this plus sign on the top right here and then you want to check the axis here okay so our axis here will be million sorry million let me see million so we're good with this one um what's the next thing here so million display only the data values along the top of the uh each chart so I, if i'm meant to say i can i can actually um you know label this um the horizontal axis which is the yeah the horizontal axis i can label it to be app title but i don't think the question said we should do that so i'm gonna just get it off okay so i will leave my because obviously the the categories are very obvious so i display only the data values along the top of each uh bar so what i'm gonna do here you want to click on the charts uh, i want to click on that plus sign here go to data level check it and then that will give you the levels on top the values on top okay so by this i'm done with this one let me just uh, highlight it. I like to highlight them so I don't get confused. Okay, so 27. Format the value axis as the scale to display the value axis scale, okay, which is the vertical axis. So format it to display a minimum value of uh, 0 and a maximum value of 15 and an increment of 3. Okay, so once you hear inc increment, your, your mind should go to measure. That's what I always used to tell my students. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, right click and then go to format axis here. So you want to make sure that you select this axis and then right click. Okay. So that should that should bring you to this point. Okay. So a situation where you you just want to assess uh, this, maybe you right click and then go to uh, let's say uh, let me just right 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 click right there. So you can actually you can actually um, assess this place to get the vertical axis, okay? So just in case you get confused, so this is where the vertical axis is coming from, okay? So uh, so the next thing we want to do actually is to make sure that the minimum is zero, and then the maximum should be fifteen, okay? The maximum should be fifteen, and then um, so let me just even click outside, and then okay, so let me go back to. Where is that again? Okay, let me just uh, right click right there, go to format again. Okay, so it's, it's showing here now. Okay, so you see that when you click outside, you see that the maximum will be 15, but of course the minimum will be minus zero. You shouldn't mind that. The first thing you have to do is to make sure that the measure is three. Okay, if it's three, if you press enter, that should be able to you know distribute it from zero to 15, which is uh, the vertical axis. Okay. All right, so that does it for us here. Um, am I missing anything? Mm, for now, no. If I'm missing anything, leave a comment down below so that others can still learn, okay? Uh, I think, okay, so 27, we're done with 27, actually. Okay, so 28, place the chart to the left of the uh, bullet on the slide with the title, Virtual uh, Cycling Train. Mm, so I want to believe that I did not miss anything. So I'm just going to copy this. Uh, let me be sure of extra information. Make sure that uh, no words in the chat are split. Okay. So let's see what that. Uh, let's see. Okay. So if you, if I kind of make this chart to be bigger, you see that the words with the category the words will uh, split here. We don't want it to split. We just want it to resize it enough for it to be one word and then probably in diagonal form, something like this. So you want to be sure that it's like that so that they don't split. Okay. 
So let's let's be sure of other things. All the data and labels are fully visible. The chart and its content do not overlap. Any slide item. Okay, so we're good with that. So I can easily copy this control C. So let me be sure of where I'm meant to. So I'm supposed to place the chart to the left of uh, the bullet on the slide with this. Okay, so so let's go. Uh, I think this is it. Virtual cycling trend. Let me be sure from the question again. Virtual cycling trend. So you want to uh, keep the chart on the left. So you want to actually adjust this placeholder here. Okay. So let me just adjust it a little more, something like this. All right. And I want to keep my chart to the side here. So I'm going to just click outside and then paste my chart. So you want to move your chart here, then resize your chart a little further. Okay. Making sure that the uh, words don't split, basically the category here don't split. Okay. So we're good with this. I'm fine with what I have. Okay. 28 is done. Okay. All right, so number 29, 29 on the slide with the title, okay, virtual cycling trend, the same uh, slide, create a square shaped action button and position this in the uh, top right corner. Okay, top right corner, action button. Okay, so we're gonna, so what I want to do, I will um, go to insert and then from shape here, shape icon here, you want to take this um, shape, now I'm going to hold down my shift key, okay, so so that I'll be able to draw a perfect uh, square. So move it to the side a little further, okay. So I've drawn that. Um, create a, uh, a, okay, a square shaped action button and then position this in the top right corner, okay. Format the action button so that when clicked, it opens the document. With the file name j2322trends.rtf. Okay, so let's go ahead to do that. So I want to right click, you want to go to link. Now, here I want to go to, okay, I want to make sure that uh, existing file or web page is selected. And then, of course, uh, you want to browse for your file. My file is in the desktop uh, in my J20, my May June paper 2. two. Okay, so it should be in my um, source file here. Okay, so I want to make sure that all files are showing here. And then uh, I want to locate J J2323 trends. Okay, so you want to double click right there. And then um, okay, that opens it. And then you can okay that. Okay, so uh, let me put this in a slideshow. Uh, Shift F5. So if I click on it, it should be able to open that file for me. So let me just click on it. I'll say yes to this. And then this will open the file for me. So that the link works uh, appropriately. So I'm going to press escape to go back. Okay. So uh, that works. So enter the, enter the text. Uh, top fitness trends as text on the action button so i'm going to just copy that let me just copy that and then go there so i want to just uh, double click inside there and then paste it there okay so i'm good with that so when you double click your you will see your cursor blinking inside the shape inside that shape so you can just paste all right okay so place in your evidence a document a screenshot showing the action button linked to the uh, correct document make sure that the file name is fully is fully visible okay so you want to go back there so let me just uh, click outside again and then right click on this uh, action button i want to go to link again so let me just locate it again i'm supposed to have taken a screenshot of this but i i didn't read the question up ahead so i'm going to just locate the file one more time inside here making sure that i select all files here okay so what i'm going to do is just simply to uh, select this just click on uh, sorry the, this one all right um yeah so i will take you to this this side because the question says let me even just uh can i make it smaller or something like that yeah so you want to be sure that this one is the one selected so the question says uh the action button linked to the okay so the 
uh, showing the action button link to the okay so which means i will need to also take a screenshot of the action button so what i'm going to do here is simply um uh, let me just uh yeah so i think i'm good here or should i just okay it? so let me just uh okay that and then no i i don't because obviously the address is here actually the address is here but i'm i just want to show the file actually so let me just make sure i show the file let me bring it here and then um where's our file just click on it let me just click on it to show the examiner that i actually selected the file the file is there so i'm going to just go click uh, and then um, take a screenshot of everything around here so that should be able to give me that okay so in order to be more uh, specific you can actually select this okay yeah i can select this and then draw an arrow to show the, the file that I've, I've selected something like that but obviously the details is already down here okay so we are good with that so i'm gonna just copy that and then go to my evidence um so let me see evidence what is this uh supposed to be 29 okay so we we have 29 here so i'm gonna paste my work here so probably resize it a bit should i not necessary i'll just leave it like that maybe push this 29 down whatever so just that's it right there okay um okay so i've got this so number 30 set the slide shows so it loops continuously on screen all right um okay so place in your evidence document a screenshot to show the presentation set to this set to display in a continuous on screen loop okay so we're going to show evidence okay so for us to make the slide to continuously loop so let me just close this this time around uh you want to go to um you want to go to slideshow and you want to go to set up slideshow you want to click on that and then that will show you this so you want to make sure that you check on loop continuously until escape that means escape is, is pressed right um let's see so i need to take a screenshot uh, evidence uh, to show the presentation set to display in continuous screen okay so i can just uh, actually take a screenshot of just this okay okay sorry let me just um remind you copy that and then uh, paste it in my evidence 30 i hope that's present 30 actually yes evidence 30 so this time around, I might have to resize this one to fall in. If I resize this one, will it fall into the data page? Nah. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. Um, okay. So let me just, for, just for convenience, for, just for posterity's sake, I'm just going to, okay, well, let me just leave it like that. But I, I can just move this one down further just to get to the next line, just to be, you know, neat. So I'm good with that. Okay, so uh, my I need to okay this. So when I okay this, so let me just go to the next, the last slide here, or let me just go to the fifth slide. So if I put it in slideshow, um, shift F5, and then I go to the last. This is the last. So if I if I press uh, the arrow, it's supposed to show me blank space or you know exit or something like that. So but of course it will start looping. So that's how. So it will continue looping until I press escape. Okay, so that's what they want us to do. So which is okay. So that's number thirty. Or let's say step thirty this time. Okay, so thirty-one. Save the presentation. So I'm going to simply save the presentation. So save. I'm interested in saving it in uh, my uh, my work area. So I'm going to go to my file here, and then go to inside my work area i want to save it as a, maybe presentation i don't think there's any name to say we should save it with so i'm going to just save it as a presentation uh powerpoint something like that whichever one powerpoint okay so i'm going to save that okay so let's see the next thing 
So the next question is uh, print all the slides as a handout uh, as handout in in portrait uh, orientation with three slides uh, to the page. Okay, so let's go ahead to file to do this. I uh, go to print. Um, so you want to go to uh, print all slides because uh, we're meant to print all slides. So you want to go to full page here. So you want to click on uh, three slides per page. Okay. So this is how your work is going to look like. So you can go ahead and and uh, click on print to print it out. Okay. So normally um, I like to print to PDF, but to do this, um, you can actually go to print to print PDF. Okay, so so that your work will be there. So, but uh, the caveat here is that you might have to do a little bit of adjustment because if you actually uh, do this like this, it's going to give you, it's going to just, you know, randomly just give you the full pages. So let's just try that. Let's try, see, see what I mean. So I'm going to leave it as printout, uh, test, something like that. So if I publish this this way, you will see that it doesn't show me it doesn't really show it as uh, as a handout okay and uh, for you know three uh, slides to a page okay so this is actually wrong so if you want to keep a PDF format of it so if you don't print immediately and you want to keep a, a PDF copy so you, to do it right you want to go to print file print and then um, okay of course it's like this so by the time you will print a PDF here you can go to PDF here, so you may have to go to option here, options, and then uh, you we you are interested in actually a handout. So when you, when you click on handout, you see um, slides per page. So you want you want to uh, uh, you know uh, select three, right, and then you okay it. Now one thing you have to understand is that if I don't uh, actually select this one. Hmm, uh, what's going to happen is that it's not going to give me a more like a, a line a, around the slide i'll show you what i mean so and i'll come back and then i select it just want to show you some little little things you, you have to be mindful of okay so i'm going to just okay this okay so let me call this uh, test two test two okay so if i publish this now it's going to show uh the slide and then the uh, handouts, right? In handouts and uh, in three slides per page. But there's always a border around this uh, slide to the up on the left, right? So you want to make sure you add it. So this one, mm, not good enough, all right? So let me go back again and then go to file, go to print, and then um, go to, okay, of course, um, I'm gonna print all and everything is showing pretty well. So I want, it, I want this border around this uh, slide to show, okay? So um, you go back, you go back there to print to PDF, continue that, and then uh, uh, click this, and then um, what I want now. So I want to do it right. So uh, let me see this step thirty one printout one. So let me just do step uh, thirty one printout one, something like that. So I want to go to options here. I want to make sure that I click on uh, handout. You want to make sure that you click on uh, uh, three uh, slides per page. And then you want to make sure you check these frame slides. Okay, it's very important. So when you when you uh, select that and then publish, you find out that it's gonna look exactly like uh, what how it's supposed to be or what it was on the preview. Okay, so this is very, very important. So anytime you want to save this uh, to PDF, so that's how you're going to do it basically when you're printing to PDF. Okay. So this is uh, actually that for this one. Okay. So this is just little switch you may have to do. Otherwise, you can print straight. There's nothing wrong with uh, uh, going straight to sending it straight to printer. Maybe when you come here, it's just select your favorite printer uh, and then just send it to that particular printer and then go ahead to print. But I always encourage students to keep a copy. Okay, the PDF copy of the finished work for every printout, just in case if something goes wrong. You know how rowdy uh, examination can be, so it is important to, to keep a copy so that you can easily copy instead of going to make changes again and all that. Okay, all right. So let's see the the other question 
Okay, so let me just close this one. So let's see. Print the slide with the with the title "Virtual Cycling Trends" as a full page slide in the landscape orientation. Okay, landscape orientation. So you want to go back right there. So what we want to do is to look for this one, virtual cycling uh, trends. So you want to go to file, you want to go to print. Now here we're interested in a, a print current slide. So that will show us, and then we're interested in just full page. Okay. So that will show us a full page. So one of one. All right. So you want to make sure that, um, he, you know, the slide was, um, let's see. Okay, this is already in, in portrait actually. Okay, so this is already in, in portrait. Sorry, not portraits. What what are we saying? What are we talking about here? In landscape orientation. Okay, this so this is already in landscape orientation here. Okay, full page slide. Okay, so um, you can go ahead to, uh, uh, you know, print to PDF. Okay. So I'll, I'll go and print, and print this and then click this and then go to this point. So here you might want to uh, select, uh, okay, so let me select as frame so just so that that line uh, border will be around the slide. So you want to click on current slide. So these are very, very important for you to do this. So this time around, we're not, we're not uh, printing handouts, we're printing the slides, right? So, and of course the current slide, that's what I want to print. And of course, I will actually um, go ahead to OK that. OK, so um, so let me call this uh, uh, step 31. Step 31 uh, printout, printout 2, something like that. OK, because that's the second printout for uh, uh, step 31. So I'm going to publish that and then see how it's going to look like what it gives me what i need um exactly gives me what i need is in portrait i mean it's in landscape and then i'm good with this so this is uh, how it's supposed to be okay all right so that's for that so this little thing you have to be caught you have to you just have to take note of that so otherwise i think it's best for you to i just wanted to show this is not really a must actually so you can just go ahead to print straightforward instead of like trying to save in case you get this um, if it's going to confuse you okay so but it's very, very important for you to know all this okay just in case all right okay so let me just select this one okay so uh tax five print the evidence document printing the evidence evidence, evidence documents make sure that your name center number and candidate number appear on every page of your evidence document okay so um i'll go to my evidence documents okay everything is here so uh, obviously you can go to file and then print print a pdf here so everything is sharing i don't mind just print it forward go ahead to do that so evidence 004 pdf okay so i think i'd already done that before so i can actually uh, replace that there okay so that's it so this is this one is done so what else let's see what else here save your uh, evidence document and print your evidence document okay everything is done here so thank you so much uh, don't forget to subscribe share the video and if you have any comments please leave a comment down below okay thank you so much i appreciate you guys and uh, like the video i will see you guys in the next uh, one bye